Risa Connection utilizes interactive connection modeling and visualization, including 2D and 3D views, for the creation and design of a variety of steel connections. In this video, we'll take a look at designing brace connections in Risa Connection. Now to start, I'm in a just kind of a generic project here. I've got some shear connections. I've also got a moment connection. But what I want to do is evaluate or look at the brace connections that are available to us. So to start, I'm going to go here and click New. And then here, I've got my options for brace connections. And so I can see the five different brace connections that exist. So I've got a vertical diagonal brace connection, a ver vertical diagonal extended shear tab connection without a gusset plate. I've got the same connection with an extended shear tab with a gusset plate. I've got a chevron brace connection, and then also a knee brace connection. A few of these different connections, including the vertical diagonal brace connection, also can be done as a seismic connection as well. We also see that I've got a brace to column base plate connection that we can use as well. I'm going to go back to the brace group, and I'm going to go ahead and add this extended shear tab brace connection without a gusset plate. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click. And that connection gets added here. And so I've got my 3D view of the connection. I've got some 2D views of the connection. And obviously, I've also got our reports. Now, if I go back to the 3D view, we can go ahead and start to look at the general properties of this particular connection. And so we can see three tabs here, general, beam, and top brace. And now if I start to look through the general connection tabs, the first thing I can see is that I have the ability to make this connection above or the, the brace below, or I could also choose the brace to be at both above and below the beam. Next, I can go ahead and choose the orientation of the column. So I can choose a flange or a web connection. I then also have the ability to choose my loading here. So this loading is in LRFD. If we wanted to change that, I can come up into our settings and click solution. And then if I just change our code spec here from, to, from the 15th edition AISC LRFD to one of the ASD options, we have loading input in ASD then. Next, we have our column and beam sections, our plate section, double angle section. So basically, all the member section properties that we want to define. And then we have some assembly properties as well. We also have the ability to then change between beam, top brace, bottom brace. Obviously, these uh, tabs are available depending on what brace sections uh, I've added here. So in this case, since I have both, we have top and bottom brace available. So at this point, this connection is failing. So we can see we've got a unity check of a little over four and a half. And so let's go ahead and make some changes to this connection to start to, to get it to uh, pass our unity check. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change our beam size. So I want a larger beam so I can expand the beam. And if I click on the ellipsis here, I can go ahead and pick a different size. So I'm going to pick a 21 by 68. So a slightly uh, deeper beam with also a little bit of a uh, wider web. Next, I can do the same thing and go ahead and change the orientation or the assembly of this particular brace. So I can go ahead and look at a 2D view. I can go ahead and change the angle here at which the brace is kind of framing into the column. And so I'm going to go ahead and make this angle 45 degrees for both the top and the bottom. I'm also going to go ahead and change the work point location. So I don't want that work point location to be right at the center of the beam here. I'm going to make that work point location um, along the column, and I'm going to make it six inches up, and let's also make it six inches down. And so now we've got this situation where uh, we've got our uh, brace now kind of framing into or kind of attached to the column, and this is kind of a little bit more realistic, I think, based on maybe what we'd have in the real world condition rather than kind of always looking to frame to the center line of a member. Next, I'm going to go ahead and change the plate thickness. So let's make that plate thickness a half inch thick. And then I think that's all the, the, the changes that we want to make to the general properties. I'm going to go ahead to beam here and I'm going to expand our beam bolts. Now we are a bolted connection. And so in this case, I'm going to add in some additional bolts. So let's go six bolts and I'm going to throw in some additional rows too. So let's go three rows. So let's make a much larger connection here. Now I also probably need to, if we can see here, our failure, if we look at our unity check, we're failing at a 1.0 unity. And mainly it's because we've got some geometric restrictions. And so if we go ahead and look at our tab here, there's no issues there. We've got a geometric restriction in the beam here. And so in this case, we're failing our max edge distance 
um, on the beam. We're also failing on the Whitmore and the gusset plate. So if I go ahead back to the 2D view, I'm gonna go ahead and change our work point locations. And you'll notice that I can go ahead and just click on a dimension here and it will automatically select that dimension. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that, let's say 12 inches. And I can go ahead and make this one as well, let's say 12 inches. And then I can go ahead and look at what we're still failing on. So if I go look at our reports here, we still have some geometric restrictions in the beams. So we're failing on our max edge distance. So I'm gonna go ahead to the beam here and I wanna change this beam bolt edge distance. So let's go ahead and try maybe three inches. We're getting closer, but that doesn't quite make it. So let's try five inches. Okay, we now pass that, we're still failing. Let's go ahead and look at our top brace, it looks like. So if I go back to the 2D view, we look like we need to change our top brace. So I'm gonna make this uh, plate depth uh, along the top of the beam 13 inches and go back to our reports again. So. We still have an issue with our top brace and we're okay on our bottom brace now. So let's just keep moving our top brace here. So let's go back to the reports here and let's say our top brace 14, that makes it further away. So let's try 12 and a half. That's not gonna work. Let's try 12. Okay, let's try 11.875. Still failing, how about 11 and a half? Okay, 11 and a half gets us to where we need to go. So now we've got a fully passing connection. So we can go back and look at the 2D view here. And so we've got this connection now ready to go. And next we could go ahead and add uh, another one of our brace connections. So if we wanted to add a different brace connection here, we could go ahead and add another brace connection. We could also go ahead and look at uh, creating a connection report, um, but really, for more information about brace connections as well as other connections that are available in Risa Connection, go ahead and visit risa.com.